Welcome to a new product segment of Jay Leno's Garage. This car you might recognize as a Porsche 2008 uh, GTRS. You know, cars get heavier and heavier, and of course, racers try to make them lighter and lighter. And one place you can save a lot of weight is in wheels. But there's all kinds of wheels out there. I need to tell what's good, what's bad. This is a fascinating wheel here. This is from uh, Carbon Revolution. Uh, look at the size of this wheel. Now, I know most of you know I already have superhuman strength, but look at that. I mean, how much does this weigh? 12, 15 pounds? I mean, it's pretty amazing. Uh, totally made of carbon fiber. Let's meet uh, one of the guys from Carbon Revolution, Brett Gass. Brett, what's your, what's your title, executive what? Uh, I'm one of the founding members. One of the founding as, members. One of the inventors of the technology. One of the inventors of the technology, okay. So what do we invent here? It's a carbon fiber wheel. We've had those before. What's, what's new about this one? Well, this is single piece, so it's not a multi-piece wheel. Okay. You know? And really one of the goals of the company was to bring this to mass market. So this is made in an ISO certified environment, right? So this is manufactured for volume, quality controlled. Okay. Um, and, and really we're trying to, you know, bring this as an efficiency technology to the mainstream automotive market. And what, is there a standard for wheels? I, I know in Germany to get something certified, it must meet X requirements, whatever. Uh, can someone just make a wheel and put it out there, or do you have to give this wheel to the government and they test it? How does that work? Yeah, you know, there's, there's different standards all over the world. We have an office in Germany. I'm currently located over there. Right. I've been working with the TÜV and the, the Germans for about three years now. So we hope to have the German standard published soon. Okay. But absolutely, there's a whole range of tests, fatigue tests, impact tests that the wheels have to pass to be called a wheel. Right. right. So it's not that we can just go into shop hand lay up a wheel and then say we've got a what you've got there is a round black object right, right so this wheel has passed all of the industry standard tests currently to an oem level specification so which is much exceeds a typical aftermarket specification now if this was a original equipment wheel what would it weigh so the cr9 yeah. they're depending on the different models we're about 15 and a half pounds okay and a, and a normal wheel would weigh yeah just about 20 pounds 20, 20 pounds yeah. okay so. when we look at the porsche for example when we convert from the OE wheel to CR9s, it's 42 pounds of unsprung rotating mass. All the way, when you count all around the car. Okay. And you say it's a one piece, so it's all made in one piece as opposed to in the early days of carbon fiber wheels, they were two piece wheels? Uh, there's been some two piece wheels. Okay. Um, there's been a range of options, and you can see that you know, this one is tooled all over, so all the surfaces are nicely finished, right? Highly tolerant. It comes out of the the tool tolerance, so there's no mm -hmm. post-machining operation. Right. Yeah. Now, um, without giving away any trade secret, you say you invented this type of wheel. Now, to the novice person, well, like myself, carbon fiber wheels, I guess carbon fiber is carbon fiber. What makes this different from other carbon fiber wheels I have seen? Well, one for design for manufacturing to make it high volume and okay. to automotive quality standards, so right. an OEM will start to use the technology. We had to really streamline the process. So I can tell you what it's not. It's not made out of prepregs, that classic race material where guys are hand making things. Right. Um, we don't use autoclaves. We don't use, it's not a classic RTM. So taking out these sort of rate limiting big capital steps, we're able to make it efficiently. Uh, efficiently. Now the autoclave, isn't that where carbon fiber is usually made? It's like a Explain what this is. It's like a giant oven, essentially, yeah, and you bake, you bake it more or less? That's right. Okay, and but you don't use that. No, we don't use it. It's an energy intensive and expensive step. So we've got a different way of processing the carbon. Okay. Again, for, for quality and speed and getting these to a high volume. Um, right now, fundamentally, this is an efficiency technology. We want to get to higher volume platforms. Um, very exciting, the last uh, tail end of last year, we've signed an OEM deal. So. In a year or two from now, we'll see when they announce it, but there okay. is a car coming to market that'll have carbon wheels on it. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Will, that be, will that be the first? Is there any manufacturer making a carbon fiber wheel now? Um, currently, there is a Koenigsegg. Right, you have right. to buy the car to get the wheel. Right, right. right. He's got a, it's a pre-preg technology. That seems a little expensive, crafted. buying the car just to get the wheel. Well, yeah. you know, it's a, it's not your daily commuter, that Right, car, right, yeah. yeah. Well, I commute in my P1 McLaren, so. Yeah. Now that, for example, the P1 McLaren uses some sort of super aluminum composite. Is that about the same weight as this, or is this still lighter than that, do you think? Um, this one's still a little lighter than that. Okay. And as we look at wheel technology, especially with aftermarket wheels, there's yeah. a trade. Wheels have to be, right, light, mm -hmm. but they also have to be stiff, right? So one of the things we've done with this product is we've designed it to meet OEM levels of stiffness. Okay. So for example, it's very important in the back of the Porsche 
to have very stiff wheels, right? That's camber compliance. Right. So if you put a lightweight alloy wheel on the back of a Porsche, that inner rim flex, you lose control of the tire. It makes the Porsche handle worse. You may have a lightweight wheel, but you've got a flexible wheel. Right, okay, so, so you're moving around. We haven't, uh, we haven't lost any of the, you know, the great engineering the guys at Porsche do by maintaining OEM levels of stiffness. I mean, we'll find out how dramatic the change is before we do. I mean, to the average person, I, you know Bernard from our shop here? He's a racer. That's what he does every weekend. He's racing somewhere. We're going to take this car to Willow Springs and try it with regular wheels and Perfect. see if he can tell the difference. I'm not sure I could. Uh, could the average person like me who enjoys driving and enjoys driving fast but is not a racer per se, would I be able to tell the difference? Do you know? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Really? Okay. It's very tactile. I mean, one of the things we look at on the front end, the steering system, uh, is the gyroscopic effect. So these mm -hmm. are the, because it's a rotating mass, you've got to change direction. Those forces at the steering wheel, they're, they're pretty small. They're tactile yeah. at your fingers. Well, you brought we something those. here to demonstrate that. Yeah, is absolutely. that what this is here? Let's show what we have here. We have uh, these two gyroscopes. Because you don't want to exhaust our upper arm muscles by spinning that by hand. You yeah, can do yeah. it electrically. Well, here, here's the idea, it's just to demonstrate. So okay. this is the mass and inertia of an OEM Porsche wheel, okay. and that's the, the difference with a CR9. Okay, right? so this is aluminum. This is aluminum. And that's carbon fiber. That's carbon. And really, when you... You can you, hold one Yeah, you, you can hold one of okay. those. But really, what we notice initially is, right, for the drive line, just spinning them up the torque, you can feel the difference just to get that to right, move. Right, to go back and forth. Yeah, okay. and you can feel that. Okay, and obviously this is a heavier wheel, so... Yep. A flywheel, obviously, once in motion, stays in motion. So exactly. So braking and accelerating. So braking and accelerating, to get it to do that, okay, yeah. requires more effort. So here's the, here's the next well, piece. Once, yeah. once you get up to speed on the track, yeah. right, you have to change direction of that gyroscope. Right. Yeah, you can feel it fighting you. You can feel it fighting you, exactly. Yeah. And so instead of feeling the tire and the grip on the ground, you're feeling the wheel. So once the CR9 gets spinning, Okay, yeah I, yeah, I can tell the difference. Yeah. Okay. So, really, that's what we're after here. You know, that's the best explanation I've heard, actually. This is pretty simple, but pretty dramatic explanation of how it works. Because for a lot of guys, I, now, wheels like this cost, what, about 15000 a set? Yeah, that's right, okay. here in the States. Of course, that's a tremendous amount of money, but if you had a new Ferrari or a new Lamborghini or certainly a McLaren, I imagine original equipment wheels would run you just about that anyway, yeah, wouldn't it? the parts counter, I'm sure they're pretty okay. pricey. See, like for me, rather than skip a couple lunches, I could get these wheels and eat my big lunch and I would still be in the same weight range. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's see, and do you use special lug nuts? Absolutely, well, included with the wheels, we have a custom two-piece titanium wheel bolt. We're a little obsessed with the weight and performance, okay, so. Okay, we'll throw in the lug nuts for nothing. You can have the lug yeah, nuts. Yeah, because lug nuts are included. Uh, what do we have around here? Around the obviously, there, it's a tapered lug nut, right? Yeah. Well, we have again uh, some patents. We're a heavily engineered organization, so how the wheel is constructed around that is very special. Okay. Now, no, the materials are just a hard anodized uh, aluminium. Okay. So here. Pretty straightforward. Yep. This is aluminum. Okay. Yep. Or aluminum. Or aluminum as we say. Aluminum in this country. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy driving them around the track. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a demonstrable experience. It gets out there, makes the car handle and feel and ride better. Let's go to Willow Springs and see how this works. Springs, which is about uh, an hour and a half from Los Angeles, or 57 minutes if you're in the McLaren P1. Now, if you've been to this website before, you know I'm not a race car driver. I don't know what I'm doing. I just kind of look the part here, but I'm going to have some fun. That's why we brought along our own version of the Stig. There we go. Kelly Collins. Kelly, how are you? Nice to meet you, Jay. Now, he's raced for BMW, Corvette, uh, Porsche, so pretty good credentials. So he's the guy that's going to take us around. And I'm just gonna have some fun. I'm just a regular guy that's out here on the track. And of course, you know Brett, we just met him a minute ago. All right, we're gonna get in this thing. We're gonna try it with the factory wheels and then switch to the uh, Carbon Revolution wheels and uh, see what happens. And later, we'll have Bernard. You know our shop foreman. Now Bernard races every weekend and uh, he's a much better judge of this kind of thing than I am. So we will uh, we'll have some fun. You ready to go, you guys? Absolutely. Cool, let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, we're taking the uh, Porsche out now with the standard wheel, and I've got obviously uh, Kelly Collins here. You know, if you're going to do a track day, have an expert with you. All men think they're race car drivers. They're not. Learn to take instructions. All right, here we go. Okay. Easy on the throttle. Good. Aim for that bag. Straight line brake. Brake, brake, brake. Turn in. Nice and smooth. Good. No, there, there you go. Good. Leave it, second. There you go, nice. Pick up your throttle a little bit. Now straight line brake, braking, braking, down to second, turn in. Easy on the throttle, wait. Now squeeze. Brake straight, brake straight line, brake hard. Look through the corner, get your eyes up. Now let it out. Keep that arc going, nice. Very good. I want you to brake a little earlier down here. Right about here. Right now. The brake. Now turn in. Off the brake. There. See how much better that is? Works yeah, better. Much better. Yeah. And we're gonna pull off. Boy, it's a nice handling car. Isn't it? Fun? Uh, yeah, it really is fun. Yeah. And uh, you really have to do this a hundred laps to get the feel for it. But even after just four or five laps, you start to get into the groove of it and you begin to understand it. And uh, you can feel a slide, you can feel it flex a little bit, so I'm curious to see what, what a difference the, the uh, Carbon Revolution wheel will make. Because it is a little stiffer, isn't it? It's a little bit stiffer, yeah. so your sidewall deflection and how yeah. the car performs through the corner is going to feel a little bit more, uh, you bead one with the car. Right, right, Rather right, than right. having a secondary response. Okay, that, so you got a good comparison just then. Yeah. Drove the car real nicely. Let's try the Carbon Revolution wheel, see what happens there. Well, Bernard's with me. I'll do a few laps, and then Bernard will do a few laps. We'll see if we can tell the difference. We've got obviously cold tires on here, so I want to get them warmed up a little bit. Bernard, you've raced this track, right? Yeah, I have. It's been a long time, so it's kind of new to me, too. I must say, this is a nice driving car, isn't it? It is. Well, well, the tires are cold. 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 <laughs> Watch the date try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mouth full of dirt. Yeah. You're going to have dirt on the tires right now, so give it a couple of corners. That was a good warm-up lap, huh? Yeah. See, this is where I felt the wheel flex with the other with the other right. wheel. Okay, this is where we spun before. The tires are a little more heat in them now. Seem to stick okay now. Flexing as much around that corner. Oop. Nice, nice recovery. Good save. Good save. You should come out here all day. Let's get Bernard behind the wheel, see how he does. I'm probably going to take a little bit of different line than you do. So we'll see. You. Okay, 
I think I'm done. Well, Bernard and I are back from our test drive. Let's bring Brett in. Brett, come on in from a Carbon Revolution. First, we'll hear from the novice, then we'll hear from the expert. Um, <laughs> I think you got to get to know this track. I mean, after about five or six laps, you get to know the car a little bit. On the standard wheels, there was that turn where the way the car goes this way, and you can feel it. You can feel the wheel move a little bit, and you sort of compensate for that. Then you put these wheels on, and it feels stiffer. I think if you own this car and you spend a lot of time in it, you will really notice a difference. I didn't notice it at first, and then the more I went around, it started to go, okay, this is different than the standard wheel. It's not, it's not flexing quite as much. It's, it's actually much, much stiffer. So I, I think, they're, yeah, they're definitely different. But what do you think? Well, I think the steering input is a lot easier, you know, yeah. as, as you get in, and especially on the high speed into the first turn, steering input is a lot less and it tracks really nice. And the other thing I notice when the car is sliding, when it's sliding, it, it's very smooth and, and yeah. predictable. It's not, it, it's you, don't, not, you it, don't feel like it's flexing. Right, it's not yeah. hooking up and letting go. You can get into sliding with a little bit of throttle steer. You can just keep it sliding. Uh, and that's, that's the big difference I notice on the back. Yeah, I think if you own the car, you really, I don't think it's anything someone would jump and go one lap, put the others and go another lap. I don't think you notice the difference. No. Just playing here today and having fun with this car. And it's a fantastic car, by, by the way. Yeah. Jeez, it, it's really, it feels like it's solid billet. It just goes around right. nicely. They're yeah. Putting in less steering effort. So they're working much less to get the car to go where they want. Yeah. So even at various levels of driving talent and skill, people are getting more out of their car. Yeah. So when we're working right. with Kelly, He's pulling off a second, second 1.4 on a lap, on a 70 second lap, where, you know, some of those, the more novice drivers are still getting more out of their car, more predictable. Yeah, yeah. I think in a few years, this will be the standard. In the same way you had the single clutch gearboxes, then the double clutch came in and replaced it. The single clutch was fine until something better came along. It's like these wheels are fine, the standard wheels, until something better comes along. And I think right now we're in the, uh, the beginning of the cutting edge of the next generation of things to happen to cars, you know? It was the double clutch gearbox, uh, it's all the carbon fiber, and now we're moving into carbon, because as of now, there's no standard production car with a carbon fiber wheel, isn't that correct? No, yeah, it's one of the things Not yet. we're okay, on. So. We've got some OE, OEM programs coming, so in the near future, you'll hear some exciting news yeah. from us. That's right, so see, so yeah. the revolution starts right here. We started it. <laughs> see you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>